If you're trying to break into commercial real estate, you need to know Excel and you need to know it well. But someone just telling you that you need to know Excel isn't necessarily helpful since there are over 500 functions that Excel has to offer, many of which are honestly just not that applicable for commercial real estate investors. So to help you cut through the noise and focus on the most useful functions that you will need to know if you're targeting real estate analyst roles or you're just trying to more efficiently analyze your own deals in Excel, in this video, let's walk through four of the most commonly used Excel functions, function categories, and general functionalities for real estate investors specifically and how each of these tend to be used within a real estate investment analysis. So the first function on this list is probably the most important function we'll talk about with this often being the main focus of an entire real estate financial model, especially for institutions and major private equity firms. And this is the XIRR function. Many people are familiar with the basic IRR function in Excel, which in a pro forma model calculates the internal rate of return based on a series of projected cash flows. But this basic IRR function calculates this using an extremely simplified approach since by default, this function assumes that all cash inflows and outflows occur only once per year on the same exact date, which for a commercial property generating rental income and paying operating expenses and debt service on a monthly basis is usually just not very realistic. The XIRR function solves this problem by taking into account the exact date of each cash flow projected, making this calculation significantly more accurate, especially in cases where cash flow is distributed on a monthly or even quarterly basis. And to put the impact of this into perspective, a deal requiring an initial $1 million equity investment that produces a $10,000 distribution each month for three years and then distributes $1.5 million from sale proceeds at the end of 36 months would generate a 26.1% internal rate of return using the XIRR function. But if we were to forego using the XIRR and we just analyze the total annual cash flows distributed, assuming these distributions are made once per year at the end of each year, using the standard IRR function, our internal rate of return in this case would now drop to just 24.9%. And while a 1.2% variation might not seem like a huge difference, many commercial real estate investment firms will actually come up with a valuation for deals they're analyzing based on this exact IRR figure, and the internal rate of return is also often used to calculate cash flow distribution splits between partners within many JV equity waterfall structures. This is why the XIRR function is often specifically called out within an operating agreement of a real estate partnership for the purposes of calculating the internal rate of return to determine promoted interest since in practice, cash flow distribution dates sometimes vary significantly during an investment period and the timing of a property sale usually isn't going to fall directly on a regular monthly or quarterly distribution schedule. The bottom line here is that the XIRR function should be used in almost all cases when calculating the internal rate of return on a real estate deal and first knowing that this function exists and then actually making sure to use it is a key part in making sure your analysis is as precise as possible. Now, the next function on this list is really a set of functions that all relate back to the same Excel logic and this is the category of IF functions. If functions essentially use a basic if this then that logic where a certain value is returned if a condition is true and another value is returned if a condition is false and this ends up being very applicable to real estate financial modeling in a lot of different scenarios. Basic if statements can be really helpful to create timing triggers in a model. So for example, to produce zero values after or before a certain date to calculate irregular cash inflows or outflows at specified times, or even to tell Excel to run different formulas automatically based on an input that's selected within a dropdown list. And in a real estate investment analysis context, these things often come into play when you're doing things like trying to calculate sale proceeds automatically 
based on a specific sale date, trying to automatically add cash flows related to things like refinance proceeds or interest only periods into your model, or even just making sure that you're able to calculate cash flows related to different operating expense reimbursement structures associated with commercial leases. The umbrella category of if functions also includes functions like sum if, average if, and count if, which are also commonly used in a real estate financial model to do things like find the average or sum of cash flows in a specific year, to find the total number of multifamily units or commercial suites that fall into a certain category, or to find the average square footage or average rental rates of a specific unit type based on in-place lease data. If you could only focus on one general Excel function category, this would be my recommendation since the amount of scenarios these if functions can be applied to is huge and these can make a model significantly more functional and significantly more dynamic. Now next up on this list is another set of functions, many of which fall under the time value of money category, but more specifically, these are related to calculating the total monthly payment on a loan and the principal and interest portions of that loan payment. The most commonly used functions under this umbrella in a real estate financial modeling context tend to be the PMT function, which calculates the total monthly payment on a loan, the PPMT function, which calculates the total principal portion of that loan payment, and the IPMT function, which calculates the total interest portion of a loan payment based on the specific month of the amortization period that you're analyzing. And two other functions that are directly related to these are the cumulative interest and cumulative principal payment functions, which can be used to calculate the total principal or interest paid over multiple different months. These end up being extremely useful when you're trying to roll up monthly or quarterly cash flows into an annual cash flow statement or if you need to model annual cash flows up front, but the loan payments themselves will be made monthly and you need to reflect a declining principal balance each and every month. The basic PV or present value function is also frequently used for the purposes of analyzing a commercial real estate loan since this function allows you to back solve for a total loan amount given a maximum loan payment, an amortization period, and an interest rate, and this is often directly used by lenders to size loans based on a debt service coverage ratio or DSCR constraint. Now, everything we've talked about up to this point has been related to functions in Excel, but the last point on this list isn't a function, but a general functionality offered in the software, and this is the ability to use absolute and relative references. Absolute references are references to a specific cell or cell range in an Excel workbook that won't move as that formula is copied and will essentially stay locked in place regardless of where that formula is ultimately pasted. And relative references are references to a specific cell or cell range in an Excel workbook that will move as a formula is copied. Absolute references are created by adding dollar signs before the column reference or the row reference within a formula, which effectively locks that reference and makes sure that doesn't move in a copy and paste scenario. This can be a huge time saver when making customizations to a model or building out an entire model from scratch, especially when you're creating cash flow projections that might go out hundreds of months into the future and you might need to reference a specific growth rate or base value assumption that isn't going to move across the cash flow timeline. You can also mix and match absolute and relative references by locking the row reference only or the column reference only, which can be really helpful when you're trying to do something like reference a certain date range for multiple different rows, but you don't want to have to go back and rewrite the formula for each and every line item you paste that formula into. Ultimately, Excel has a ton of functionality that makes this an extremely powerful tool for real estate investment analysis, which is why this is still the gold standard that's used throughout the industry and why it's so important to learn if you're looking to break into the business. And if you are trying to land a job in the industry and want to make sure you have the Excel and financial modeling skills necessary to land a role at a top commercial real estate investment, development, or brokerage firm, as always, make sure to check out our all-in-one membership training platform, Breaking the CRE Academy.
A membership to the Academy will give you instant access to over 120 hours of video training on real estate financial modeling and analysis. You get access to hundreds of practice Excel interview exam questions, sample acquisition case studies, and you'll also get access to the Break into CRE Analyst Certification Exam, which covers topics like real estate pro forma and development modeling, commercial real estate lease modeling, equity waterfall modeling, and many other real estate financial analysis concepts that will help you prove to employers that you have what it takes to tackle the responsibilities of an analyst or associate at a top real estate firm. And if you like this video and want to see more content on Excel tips or training, make sure to hit the like button to let me know. And if you're working in the industry already, let me know in the comments any other Excel functions or functionalities that you use on a regular basis that I didn't cover in this video. As always, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you found this helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to see more videos like this every single week, and I'll see you in the next video.